linear, linear system. So this is the only thing in chapter eight that's not linear, which also means not matrices. So every other thing we've gone over in chapter eight is all based on matrices for linear equations. So none of that applies to what we're doing right now. So this can be systems of nonlinear equations. So I did talk about systems in general of equations. And if we remember back to that, that you need to, the solution will satisfy every single equation. So whatever your solution is needs to satisfy, if there's two equations, needs to satisfy both equations at the same time. If there's three equations, all three. I think all the systems we're doing here are going to be only two equations in two variables. So do not use a matrix. On nonlinear. So generally nonlinear means you have variables that are not only to the first power. So all linear systems were like 3x plus 2y plus z. It was number times variable plus number times other variable equals number. So our nonlinear systems are generally going to be squares and cubes. Occasionally, there could be a square root in there as well. But there won't be, shouldn't be anything too crazy other than that. So it'll just be higher powers like quadratics. And all we're going to do, so here's our uh, steps to solve. So step one, you need to be an algebra badass. So what does that entail? There's generally two things. There's elimination and substitution. Those are the two tools, plus all your algebra skills, which I won't list right here. Uh, but you need to use uh, substitution and elimination. And I say badass because you need to make sure you're doing things correctly. For example, x squared plus y squared, you can't factor out a square. All the, all the rules that we've been doing, hopefully, you will be following all those. So when you factor, you'll factor carefully. And after that, uh, you're going to get some solution, and then you're going to check. So that's the other step. in each original equation. Now I say original because it's possible you made a mistake on the very first step when you change some, some equation around, so you don't want to check on some equation you generated in case your algebra is messed up. So you want to go back to the original, what was written down, when you check your answers. So that's basically it, and we're just going to uh, start doing some examples. So we are solving. Now generally you don't need to write over the real numbers, but we're not going to have imaginary solutions here. So we did some polynomial factoring, some zeros that were complex. We're not going to worry about complex solutions here. So we're going to keep it real, as we say in the math world. So the way we say that is solve over the real numbers. So we're not solving with complex uh, numbers. Uh, no, the only time will be in a polynomial that has complex zeros or complex factors. So that's the only time in this class that you will see complex numbers on your uh, final. So system, we use that funky curly bracket. And our first example will have x squared plus y squared equals 13. Now, we're not going to graph this, but if I did graph that first equation, it would have a graph you should be familiar with. What would be the graph x squared plus y squared equals 13? Not a parabola, a circle. And the radius will be square root 13, whatever number that is. And the second one, if I solve for y, I could do that pretty easily. It would be a parabola. So. We're looking at a circle and a parabola. How many places could they intersect? There's quite a few options. Could be one. I can think of a way to make it two, three, four, I think might be the most that I can think of. But they could intersect quite a few times. Unlike lines, you think about two lines, they either intersect n never, one point, or infinite points. Curves are very different. They could have lots of different numbers of solutions. So we're just going to get started. So remember. 
you know algebra, and what we're going to be doing is substitution or elimination, or both. So think substitution elimination. What can I do to eliminate x squared? So I can multiply the first equation by negative 1 and subtract from the second one, or vice versa. So I just need to subtract the two equations. And it doesn't really matter which way I do it. So that's our first move. So I like to not write over top of my original problem, so I'm not going to rewrite stuff right here. I'm going to write everything below it. So I don't like to start crossing out on the original problem. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals 13 x squared minus y equals 7, and we're going to subtract. So we're using elimination here. So we get x squared minus x squared is 0x squared, which is great. We have y squared minus negative y, which is plus y. Now you have to treat both sides fairly. 13 minus 7 is something. Is that 6, 8, 6? Uh, first equation, y squared uh, plus y. So we got a y squared from our first equation, and then we have a minus a negative y from the second equation. So we have two different places y is going to appear. All right, so elimination questions. How do I solve for y? It's now a quadratic. So I could complete the square. I could, uh, I think either way, we want to get the 6 on the y squared side. So we want to get everything. We're going to solve for 0 and then solve for y. So hopefully, this will factor nicely. Does it factor nicely? 2 and a 3. We need positive, negative. So we got product is negative 6. 3y minus 2y is 1y. So there's our factoring. So we get y equals 2 or y equals negative 3. And I'm going to actually spread this out even more, which you will see why very soon. So any questions on our solutions right here before, before we keep going? All right, so we know y is either 2 or negative 3. What other variable do we have to fig, uh, find values for? X. x. So all we have is y and x, so we don't have any z's. So I know y is either 2 or negative 3. You want to be careful that you don't throw away a solution by, for example, dividing by y and assuming it's 0 or not zero. So you want to be careful when you have your quadratic equation. You've solved quadratic equations for years. Now if y is 2 or negative 3, we're, those are different solutions. So I'm basically partitioning up the paper here. So on the left side, we'll assume y is 2. On the right side, we'll assume y is negative 3. So if y is 2, I can go to my original equation and plug in 2 and 2, and then see if I can solve for x. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in uh, 2 now. And we're going to rewrite our originals. So we get x squared. So we're going to plug this in now. x squared plus 2 squared equals 13. x squared minus 2 equals 7. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do it for negative 3. x squared plus negative 3 squared equals 13. And x squared minus negative 3 equals 7. So we'll just do, we'll do the positive one first. So y squared plus 4 equals 13. We'll subtract 4. Or x squared plus 2 squared equals 13. So we'll subtract. 4, 13 minus 4 is 9. And we'll do the same thing on the other one, x squared. 
add 2 equals 9. All right, what is x squared? Or what is regular x? Three. Or negative 3. Positive 3 or negative 3. So, and that works in both equations. So it's not like I'm just solving the first one or just solving the second one. I'm solving them both at the same time. So our answer needs to be at x and y. So I got x values. What does y equal when x equals negative 3? 2. Two. What does y equal when x equals positive 3? 2. So either way, y is 2 in this situation. We'll deal with the negative y is negative 3 afterwards. So we're just dealing with 2 right now. So we have negative 3 comma 2 or positive 3 comma 2. So in the box that I'm solving right now, we're assuming y equals 2. So that's our y value. So we just picked up the x right here. So we are halfway done. We've got half the solutions. So we're going to move over to the other side and do the exact same thing we just did, except we'll probably get different uh, x values. So we're going to do the same thing. And we have plus 9, subtract 9. We have x squared equals 4. Second equation, it is plus 3. So we subtract 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. And look at that. They're both going to be solved with which x values? 2 and negative 2. 2 and negative 2. So again, we need to put our answer with x and y together. So in this case, our y value is negative 3. So we have 2 comma negative 3 or negative 2 comma negative 3. So those are our algebra skills right there to get down to x and y. How do we know if we are right or wrong? I'll go back into the original before I mess around with anything. So when I say the original, I don't mean this is not the original right here. Now, if I didn't make any mistakes, that y value better solve that equation as well. But to really check, <laughs> I want to go to the source where we started. So if I really quickly, we'll just, we'll just try our first point right here. We'll go with, we'll do the second equation. So if I plug in negative 3 for x, I have 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. So it works on that equation. And then we'll put negative 3, 2 into the first equation. Negative 3 squared is 9, plus uh, 2 squared is 9, plus 4 is 13. So that works up there. And it should work. Every single uh, solution should work in both equations. And you could just circle. The answers are just points. So there are four solutions. Here's the four points right here. We'll go to our next example. Solve. X squared minus Y squared equals 4. And Y equals X squared. So we need to use our algebra skills. Is elimination in this form? We could do elimination, but I would need to move the x squared. I need to subtract it to get onto the left side if I want to go elimination. This is set up really nice for substitution. So, how can we substitute? I see what y equals, so I could put x squared minus, so I'm going to go substitution, x squared minus y squared which is really x squared squared. So I'm taking right here where I see y squared, I'm putting in, uh, taking out y and putting in x squared. Mm -hmm. 
there's a way better option than this. So this is degree four. It's not even quadratic. There's a better, more clever way to substitute. Anybody see a more clever way to substitute? There you go. X squared is Y. So we'll make the other substitution. So this is correct. So you can get the right answer if you keep going. But I'm going to do a slightly easier way to go. So this is difficult. Not terribly difficult, but I'm just going to cross it out. Not because it's wrong, but because I want to go a more efficient route. So I know here's X squared. And I can replace X squared with Y right there. So I'm going to substitute the other way. So we had x squared minus y squared equals 4. And I'm going to take out x squared and sub y into its place. That's way more friendly right there. That's quadratic. You can solve quadratics. So go ahead and solve this one. So you should most likely get two values for y right here. And solve for 0. Hopefully you found out factoring is not going to work pretty quickly. There's not many factors of 4, so there wasn't many, many things to try. 1 and 4, 2 and 2, they're both out. So we weren't going to get a nice integer solution. So I went complete the square. What's the other option I could have used? Quadratic formula. So we got a, a x squared plus bx plus c. You could have gone quadratic and got the same thing. All right, so we got two y values. So what we're going to do is plug them in to uh, both equations, but we're going to do it separately. So we'll do one on the left half and then one on the right half. So it's going to feel just like it did before. We'll just put our dividing line down here. Oh. So I'm just partitioning my paper. On the left half, we'll use the 1 plus square root 15 over 2. And on the right half, we'll go 1 minus square root 15 over 2. And we'll plug it into both. Make sure you plug it into y. Don't plug it in for x. So we'll go with the both equations, x squared minus y squared equals 4. So we have x squared minus this thing squared. Equals 4. And the other one is y equals x squared. Oops. And 
Now do the same on the other side. X squared minus one minus squared 15 over two squared equals four and one minus square root 15 over two equals x squared. So this number is a little bit ugly. I'm gonna start on the uh, minus side first. So we got x squared equals one minus squared 15 over two. So I don't know exactly what squared 15 is. What numbers are pretty close to? Pretty close to four. It's a tiny bit less than four, but it's close to four. So one minus something close to four is going to be negative. And x squared equals a negative value. What does that mean about x? So it's not real. So it would be a complex solution if we kept going. So 1 minus squared 15 is less than 0. So what that means is this whole quantity is negative right there. So you could go divide by 2 is less than 0. Thus, uh, x is not real. Because if you square a real number, you don't get negative. You always get 0 or more. So here, x squared equals something negative. That's going to mean x is complex. So we're out right here. We can throw away the solution. This is not a real solution. So that's what I mean, solve over the real numbers. So if you have square and it's negative, that's out. And to satisfy a system, you have to satisfy both equations, not just one. So failing on one equation, that means you're out. You can't have a solution that only works on one equation. That would not be a solution for the whole system. So I only had to check one solution. One equation failing means that's not going to lead to a solution. Now over here, 1 plus squared 15 over 2 is an ugly number, but it's an ugly positive number. So I can easily take a square root. I'll just write square root of that thing. So I have x equals, I'll leave x on that other side. So x equals plus minus square root 1 plus square root 15 over 2. Now we should also go for the other equation, just to make sure that this is going to satisfy both equations at the same time. So this was from, if I label these, that was from equation 2 that I got that as solution. So let's go and see if I could either plug this into equation 1 and see if it works, or I could use algebra and solve for x in equation 1 and see if I get the same thing. So I can go either of those two routes. So I'm in an algebra mood. Let's see if we can solve for x in equation 1. So the first step is definitely add that squared, that crazy number, to the other side. So it's x squared minus that number, so I'm going to add that number to the other side. So that's definitely the first step. So I'm pretty much done here. I could write x equals plus or minus square root of this number. If I want to clean this up, how in the world do I add 4 to this crazy thing next to it? So I need a common denominator, so I need to actually square it first. I'll get a denominator of 4, and then I will be able to add the 4 to it. So I'm going to go ahead and square this. How do I square it? Very carefully. So we'll square numerator, square denominator. How do I square the numerator? So I have to FOIL it. So don't just square 1 and square the square root of 15. You also have an outside-inside term you're going to get as well. So our denominator is going to be 4. So 1 squared is 1. Plus outside-inside, you're going to get 2 square root 15. So that's the square root 15 plus another square root 15. So that's outside-inside. And plus square root 15 squared. Right there. Would it 
yeah, that would just be 15. So 4 is 16 fourths plus 1 plus 2 square root 15 plus 15 over 4. So 16 plus 1 plus 15 is 32, right there. 32 plus 2 square root 15 over 4. And we had x squared on the left. Yeah, so x squared is still on the left side. So I can reduce this. What can I factor out in the numerator? Two. Two. So that will be 16 plus square root 15 over 2. And last step. Square root, plus or minus. I'm a little worried because we don't have the same thing we started with. We should have 1 plus square root 15 over 2. Not 16 plus square, plus square root 15 over 2. When you divided it by the 4 and you forgot to divide the 2, which would be comma 1 and you use add up to the 16, which would become 17. Let's see. Oh, but that's still just a 1. Never mind. So we add to their size, so that was positive. Did I copy the equation down right? Hopefully I did. X squared, plus mi x squared minus y squared equals 4. So we got that. And y equals x squared. We got that. The other problem is I could have made a mistake. And the original, what I said was y, was not actually y. That's another possibility. We should be getting the same number to satisfy both equations, not two separate num One number for the first equation and one number for the second equation. That's not going to satisfy both of them at the same time. So I will keep writing. So this is bad because we got a different number for the first equation from the second equation. So this is not supposed to happen. We should have gotten the same number out of both equations. So somewhere we made a mistake. These numbers are pretty ugly, so I'm thinking we probably made a mistake on solving for y in the original. So these two right here don't match, which is bad. So make sure you draw angry face. It makes you feel better. So solving system, we're supposed to solve both of them at the same time, not one of them with this number and another with another number. So we're going to go back and check our work and see if our y value is actually correct. So we're going to start at the very beginning, make sure we did everything correctly. I'll make sure I copied it down right. x squared minus y squared equals 4. y equals x squared. All right. It's also possible, if we can't find a mistake, that we don't actually get a solution. That's another possibility. So not every parabola intersects every circle. So there's a good chance the circle does not touch the parabola, which this is how it'll feel very unsatisfying when you can't satisfy the equations. You'll be able to satisfy one, but not both of them. So x squared minus y squared is 4. And where I see y, x squared at the front, we put a y in its place. So I think we are OK on this step right here. You can come back with another marker. So I think we're OK here. We just took out x squared at the beginning and put in a y. And then we add it to the other side, y squared minus y plus 4. And did I complete the square? Check negative 1. It's a negative a half. You could put a minus one half squared, but you're going to square that negative out, so I didn't bother. So we got 16 
fourths minus one fourth is fifteen fourths. So there'd be negative in front of the fifteen. Fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So there should have been a negative sign right there. So what does that mean? Y minus one half squared is negative. So we got complex solution right here. So so this right here, this negative. Once we square root both sides, we're going to get our complex solution right there. So we get uh, no real solution. So we got lucky and made a mistake and got no solution. It generally won't happen. Usually you make a mistake, you'll get the wrong conclusion. But sometimes you make mistakes, you get the right conclusion. So we could have stopped our work way earlier. We just kept going for extra practice. So I have one more example we're going to do. I'll try to hurry up. Another good place to go for extra examples is in your textbook. So you can open up your textbook, and you can see plenty of people, other people on YouTube solving uh, systems of non. Make sure you look at nonlinear equations, or else they're probably going to break out a matrix. So make sure it's not linear. or uh, you're probably better off using a matrix. All right, last up. Three x y minus two y squared equals negative two, and nine x squared plus four y squared equals ten. We could, so we can eliminate some y's. The problem is we'll still have the, the y multiplied by the x hanging around. Uh, and if we try to eliminate x, I think we'll have the, a very similar problem. So I could solve for x in the first equation. So I could accomplish that. I'll just add 2y squared and divide by 3y. And I'll have x by itself. And I can plug that in the second one. So let's go ahead, let's do something a little bit more clever. I see there's a 3x right here. I can actually solve this for 3x, or not solve this for 3x, but if I rewrite it as 3x whole thing squared, I'll be able to substitute in without using so many fractions. So this is 3x squared plus 4y squared equals 10. And what I'm going to do now is solve for 3x in the first. So I see, I could solve for x, but let's go ahead and solve for 3x. So we're solving for 3x in, and I like to label, if you label 1, 2, you can write notes to yourself like I'm solving an equation 1 for 3x. So it looks like that. Solve for 3x in equation 1. So we have 3xy equals 2y squared minus 2, and 3x equals 2y minus 2 over y. So I divided by y, simplified it in the same step. So dangerous move what I just did. What do I have to watch out for when I divide by y? So what happens if y is 0? Whatever I write after this is not going to be valid. So we're going to check separately what happens if y is 0. So by dividing by y, I assume y is not 0. So now I have to come over here and say, well, can y equal 0? I assumed y was not equal to 0 when I divided by it. So these are not considerations you probably had in your other algebra classes. You just divided by y, and everybody was totally fine with it. So you divide by y, you can do it, but you have to assume it's not 0, and then check out what happens if it is 0. So 
So let's go plug in zero real quick. That'll make our equations really nice, and maybe we'll get an easy solution out of them. So I'm just going to rewrite our equations. So we're going to try it. So we got zero minus zero equals negative two. And the second equation is nine x squared plus zero equals 10. All right, what's the problem? Is first equation happy? Nope. So we're not going to satisfy our first equation if y equals zero. So y equals zero is out. So the answer is, can y equal zero? No, it cannot. Because that first equation, you're not going to get a solution out of there. So now, we don't have to worry about y equaling zero. It's not a solution. So we're going to keep going right here. We got our 3x. And we're going to plug in 2y minus 2 over y is going in where we had 3x. So we ha have to square it. Plus 4y squared equals 10. I think we're going to have a degree 4 unavoidable here. So multiply. I could FOIL this. Let's go ahead and FOIL this out right now. So 2y squared is 4y squared. Now our middle term, inside outside term, we're going to get minus 2 times 2y times 2 over y. Minus 2 over y, or plus 2 over y squared. So 2y squared is 4y squared. Here's the two terms multiplied together, and I'm going to get negative 2 of them. So that's outside, inside. And then last up, 2y, 2 over y, you have to square that. And you're always going to get positive on your last term because you're squaring a negative. And then just copy down 4y squared equals 10. So 4y squared plus 4y squared is 8y squared. That y cancels that y, minus 8. And plus oh, 4 over y squared equals 10. So let's. We'll subtract 10 over this side. 8y squared minus 18 plus 4 over y squared equals 0. So we assume y is not equal to 0 already. So I don't have to worry about this divided by y squared part. That's not going to be undefined. So we know our y is not 0. What can I multiply by to get out of fraction land? y squared. That'll get that denominator out of there. So we have 8y to the fourth minus 18y squared plus 4 equals 0. We can definitely factor a 2 out. We can't factor a 4 out. We can factor a 2 out. So now we'll let u equal y squared. So we really have, and I can divide by 2. That's not a problem. So we have 4u squared minus 9u plus 2 equals 0. So we do have a degree 4 equation, but we can write it. It's really a quadratic in disguise. So we can solve it right here for u, and then the square root will be the solution. So how in the world do I solve for u? It's quadratic. Three options. Factor. Quadratic formula. Complete the square. Complete the square sounds tough. Let's go quadratic, just for fun. 
So we're going to get negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b is positive 9 plus or minus square root. b squared is 81 minus 4 times 4 times 2 divided by 2 times 4. Four times four is 16, 32. So we have 81 minus 32. Whatever number that is divided by eight. What is 81 minus 32? Oh, look at that, 49. Why is that really nice? Yep, so it's seven. Nine plus or minus seven over eight. So there are two answers here. Nine minus seven over eight, and these are u's. Or u equals nine plus seven over eight. Nine minus seven is two eighths, or one fourth. 9 plus 7 is 16 eighths, which is 2. So u is uh, y squared. y squared equals 2, or y squared equals 1 fourth. So there are two solutions out of both of these. Good news is they're both positive, so I don't have, I'm not throwing any away because they're both going to be real. So we get y equals the square root of one-fourth. One-half. Or negative one-half. Or y equals square root two. Or y equals negative square root two. So there are four possibilities for y. So we're going to have partition into four places here. And we're going to go and plug these in to the original equations. So unfortunately, we're out of time. So these are all real values. And you can find the x values. Oh, we have to scroll up really far. Plug into the original two, just like we did before. And not all of them will necessarily lead to a solution. So you may. Two of these might not work.